Hello, blog post ladies. Welcome to Simply Stacy, where the joy of the Lord is our strip. Well, today I want to talk about just some different topics. <laughs> I've been dealing with some different issues with different ladies, and I feel like this is something I want to bring to the blog post because I see it over and over again. There's so many single ladies in the body of Christ, and this is one reason why I dig the blog post. I got a tongue twister going on here. But this is the reason why I did this blog post is to help you single ladies and married ladies too because a lot of married ladies are going through. But to my single ladies, I want you to make the right choices according to God. And I want to talk about sex right now. God said every man have his own wife, every woman have her own husband. You know, you go in Corinthians, read Corinthians. You know, 1 Corinthians 7, you know, some different chapters now on marriage and see what Paul says about marriage. You know, so many people in the body of Christ are doing like the world. You know, God has rules and regulations. There are laws set in place in God's kingdom to protect us. It's not to hurt us, but to protect us. And when we come to God and we don't get our mind renewed, you'll be doing the things that you did in the world. Then after you do it, you feel so much guilt, so much shame, so much condemnation that the devil puts on you because of you going into your fallen nature. You know, you're going with your own lustful desires and lust of your eyes and the lust of your flesh. And God don't want that, babies. He don't want that. He wants you to have that love and all those desires that you have for a good mate and, you know, to enjoy. And, you know, a mate is a gift. It's not a prize that you win, but it's a gift. You know, and it's not about just about the wedding and the pretty dress, but that's just where you go and you show your family and your friends that God is good, that he is, his grace is sufficient for you and that what he's done for me, he'll do for you. And it just shows the love and the bond that you and your husband have at the wedding. But ladies, if you keep in mind that sex outside of marriage is not of God and don't continue to walk in that area of disobedience, God will bless you. He will bless you. You know, and then you won't have all this guilt and condemnation that so many of you have, you know, from falling with these men. You know, men want you to do what they want you to do. I don't have so many different experiences, but I have matured up. I have come into myself. So unlike a lot of women that's immature and haven't grown up yet and, and still are battling in that area with sex, you know, it can't wait until they get a husband. You know, you might go a little while and then you fall. You go a little while, then you fall. God wants you to pick yourself up. You know, don't continue in error. You know, ask God to forgive you and turn from your evil ways and he'll heal your land. You know, God wants to heal you. You know, you keep opening yourself up, giving yourself to these men. And they're really not your husbands. You know, God said, guard your heart. You have to guard your heart. You know, you keep opening yourself up emotionally, mentally, and then physically. You know, when these men come to you, they're not saved and you're saved. You're not on the same page. That's number one, unequally you. You shouldn't even deal with that. And just because he's saved, you need to know what his belief system is. You need to know his commitment to God and his relationship with God. Because if he's not committed to God, he's not going to be committed to you. If he can't do the right thing by God, he's not going to do the right thing by you. I don't care what it looks like. What is his relationship with God? You know, when I go in the Bible and I read about what makes a good husband and what makes a good wife, it's never talking about the physical. It's always talking about the character. And some of us ladies, a lot of you ladies are getting men with flawed characters. They're not committed to God. And then you wonder why he's not committed to you. You know, you don't look deep before you leap. You leap on in, you know, all caught up into the emotional things with these men. Then you go do sexual things with him. You know, and once you do that, you lock yourself into bondage. You know, you, the, your way of thinking and, and all that kind of stuff is driven amok. 
You know, you can't even comprehend and take a step back. You got to take a step back and look and be like, is this the man that God set for me? And if you don't have sex with him nine times out of ten, he's not. You don't feel fell into your sinful nature. You did not wait on God. Your insecurities, your fears, your loneliness, all that kind of stuff has got you in this situation. So you need to get yourself out. You need to wait on God. You know, seek God first. Learn yourself. You know, become a gift. So God can send you a gift. You know, be patient. Be still and know that he is God. I know it's rough. It's Valentine's weekend. I know so many of you single ladies wish you had a mate. But you it's more than just a day. There's so many married people out here going to be celebrating Valentine's Day. But they don't have no love. They don't even love each other. They're not even treating each other right. They just do that little momentary thing because the world has set a little day on it, stamped it. This is the day for relationships or whatever. And people just go along with it, do little things so they don't make their mate upset. But at the end of the day, it should be Valentine every day for you and your mate. That's how I should be in God. Ladies, God wants to bless you with a husband. He has not forgotten you. He has not forsaken you. But I'm going to tell you. Until you learn of God, put God first. You know, he said, seek God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. Put him first. So many of you ladies are seeking after a man. Everything you do is trying to put yourself in a position to get a man. You know, but every man, just because he's of the male species, don't make him a husband. And that's where you ladies get it twisted. Just because he's of the male species don't mean he's been groomed to be a husband. He may not even allow God to work on him, process him, so that he can be a husband that treats you as Christ treats the church. Ladies, be aware. You know, and number one, stay out of the bed. I see so many things about being a virgin and being recycled virgin and, you know, just like that TV show is on. But... Keeping yourself and not having sex relations till you get married is nothing really special. It's special to the world and even in the church world because so many people are given into perversion. They're having sex without being married. You know, they're going with their lustful desires, their lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. So it's so amazing to people. I know when people ask, how can you do it? And all this stuff. Because God's grace is sufficient. And I love God. I make my body a living sacrifice unto God. You know, ladies, if you can't submit to God and do his will, when you get a husband, you're not going to be able to submit to your husband. We have to learn how to submit to God and do his will. So that we get our husband, we'll be able to submit to him as he does it unto God. You know, you don't go out here and get these unsaved men or get these carnal men that submit to the enemy and be led by the flesh. Then you go marry him and come underneath of his authority and then you submit to him. When you submit to him, you submit to the enemy or you submit to his flesh. What is leading him? You need to make sure that you get a husband that is being led by the spirit of the living God. So that submitting won't be an issue. Because it's not going to be a problem. He's not going to be a bulldog. He's not going to be bullying you. He's not going to try to make you do things. He's going to lead and guide you as God does the church. Babies, I tell you, it's just my heart. My heart goes out to so many single ladies. Because I know that a lot of you want husbands. You know, you're you're wondering what's going on. Lord, why my husband ain't here? Why I got to be single? But embrace your singleness. You know, once you mature up and once you fall in love with God, some of the stress level that you have about being alone, it will be alleviated. Because you'll be in a place once you come to maturity that you're going to want a mature man. You're not going to accept any Joe Blow that comes along. You know, you'll be so empowered within yourself that no matter if he tells you you're beautiful, you already know that because God done told us that, that we're wonderfully and beautifully made in his image. You know, you don't need all the little fancy talk. You're going to need somebody that is going to really walk the walk and not talk the talk. 
You're not going to just going to jump up and be swayed and blowed with every wind and doctrine that these men try to put on you. Ladies, if you learn how to control your emotions, keep your legs closed. Seek God. Seek God's kingdom. Go in there and find out what God says about these situations. My heart just be so heavy because so many women don't guard their heart. And out of your heart comes the issues of life. And you steady go from man to man to man to man to man to man. That means you're going from hurt to hurt to hurt to hurt to hurt to hurt. Because you be opening yourself up. And just because he's of the male species don't mean he's a husband. He's not going to protect your heart. He's going to be out to get what he wants. He'll say anything. He'll manipulate you. He'll do anything to get what he wants. A lot of us learned this as teenagers. A lot of things you've been through in high school, in your 20s, your 30s, and all you be steady going through the same thing. You have to face those demons in yourself. If you're insecure, if you don't want to be alone because you're lonely, you know, you have to face these stuff that's in yourself and deal with them accordingly. Because you could be in a relationship and be can be one of the most loneliest times of your life. Ladies, guard your heart. Don't use sex as a way of closing up just to get a man. Keeping yourself is making your body a living sacrifice unto God. That's your that's your due service. You know, the world is so messed up today because most people that had their sexual appetite opened up all kinds of ways. Either you was molested or raped. Either you got a boyfriend, started having sex without being married. You know, your sexual appetite was awakened before it's time. So now that area wants to be fed. It's just like we get hungry for food. Your body is craving that. And that's why we really supposed to wait till we get married before you open up your sexual appetite. But once you come to God, you have to close it back down. Do it the way God has designed it to be. You know, the enemy just don't got in here and just messed up. He distorts everything that God has made beautiful and wonderful. He distorts it. He makes a mockery of it. But when we come back to God and we get saved, he wants to renew your mind so that you can live kingdom principles because they're there to protect you. Babies, I love you and so does God. Have a wonderful, 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 wonderful weekend. God loves us. He wants the best for us. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He haven't forgotten you, ladies. Just allow God to do what he needs to do in your life so that that gift of a man will manifest. And when it does manifest, you will be a gift of a woman to him. Well, babies, I love you. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Smooches. Love you.